It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. Thursday evening, October 12th. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. We're covering crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro this evening. Crude is bullish and heading back inside of yesterday's range. So my plan is to look for traps and seller failures below the moving average for the most reliable buying opportunities on Friday morning. S&P is bearish and looking for rotation back down to the range low, where we'll use the battle zone to find buying opportunities going back up to retest the high. The NASDAQ is bullish, but two major clues in the chart tonight tell me to look for the two-try rule down in that battle zone for the most reliable buying opportunities on Friday. And speaking of Friday, Gold is bullish heading into the weekend, but a flat moving average tells me to watch for a triangle pattern on the chart, which means I'm looking for buying opportunities down in the battle zone to finish the week tomorrow. And of course, the euro is bearish with a spike and range telling me to use the two-try rule to find selling opportunities up above the highs of the range to finish off what's been a great week. Speaking about finishing off a great week, we had a great newsletter in store for you guys and gals tonight. We're going to be talking a lot about how to use that battle zone structure of support and resistance. And of course, we'll check the calendar for a Friday the 13th session tomorrow. Get all those black cats out of the way before you start. And of course, we'll go into the newsletter and put the plan together and we're gonna have a great friday session before we jump into friday's session plan though i do want to remind you the only place to watch the full-length version of our nightly newsletter is here on our blog at sidewaysmarkets.com if you're watching the video right now on our youtube channel not to worry there's a link in the description of that youtube video follow that link Come join me here on the blog at Sideways Markets and grab the full-length version. While you're here watching the full-length version of this newsletter, don't forget to join the mailing list. I'll send you an email every evening when our nightly newsletter goes live. Also, follow me on social, lower left-hand corner, whatever your flavor of choice, stock to its Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm always posting important charts, links, and updates throughout the week. And speaking of charts, boy, has this become a popular part of my nightly newsletter. The feedback I get from you guys, everybody seems to love the fact that you can download all the charts from tonight's video and have them on your computer for tomorrow. How easy is that? You can also send that information over to a friend as well. Speaking of friends as well, don't forget, grab that free pass. What are you waiting for? You're going to learn more with me on that free pass for free 99 than you will anywhere else on the interwebs. I can guarantee you that. Don't delay here. Once you finish up watching tonight's video, grab that free pass on the homepage here at Sideways markets.com and if you have any questions hit me up on live support i'm not a robot i'm a real human being i'm broadcasting right now from our headquarters in los angeles and i hope to speak with you on live support as well so hit me up on the live support tool we also have that on the homepage at schooltrade.com as well all right guys got a big big day tomorrow friday the 13th no broken mirrors, no walking under ladders, right? What is it? Throw the salt over your shoulder, something. I won't go into too much detail, but you guys get the point, right? I'm not a very superstitious type of person, but it is kind of always fun to, to talk about uh, Friday the 13th. Tomorrow, of course, being the end of the week. End of the week, and of course, any time I talk about a Friday, the first thing I always mention, there are two things that we always talk about when it comes to a Friday session. What is it? Early in, early out, right? That's the first That's the first component. Remember, at the end of the day, at the end of the week, and at the end of the month, for some crazy reason, traders start taking bigger risks. People are just more risk adverse when they're tired or when they've made a lot of money this week already or when they've lost a lot of money this week already, right? So you see where I'm going with this? Traders take bigger risks as we get later in the day on a Friday. Combine that with the lower volume that comes in as larger traders can't hold positions into the weekend, right? And you have a recipe for disaster. So tomorrow, anything after 11 o'clock Eastern time, you've really got to have a good reason to be trading it. You're more than welcome to hold positions into the afternoon, but I always caution you guys against entering the new positions, taking on additional risk, right? Late in the morning on Friday. My cutoff on Friday morning is at 11 o'clock Eastern time, but I'm always watching as of 10 30 10 45 to see how the market's personality goes and of course if you're on a market like gold or the euro then definitely 10 30 is going to be a big milestone for you you know crude oil 10 45 11 o'clock if you're on the e-minis the e-minis will move into the afternoon session but again gotta have a good reason to be trading after 11 a.m what else what's the second aspect of a friday absolutely right weekly levels weekly levels what are those going to be 
open, high, low, close levels with a definite emphasis on high and low levels. So last week's high, last week's low, open price from last week, closing price from last week. At the end of the week, we start watching last week's open high, low, close levels, and you're going to see a bunch of those on the chart here tonight. So anytime we talk about a Friday, no matter what the news is, no matter what's going on, it's always early in, early out, and make sure we have those weekly levels on our radar. Most indicator packages these days can plot them pretty easily for you. I provide all the templates for that stuff for all of our clients here at School of Trade. Now that we have that out of the way, as you can see tomorrow, we'll get a little bit of news here to shake things up tomorrow, right? 4 a.m. from our good friends in Italy. Then we get the CPI and the retail sales. The big, big news tomorrow. That's some big news, man. We got some inflation numbers at 8.30 and we got retail sales. Whew, big, big, big market moving that should move the needle tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. I'm not going to worry too much about business inventories or consumer sentiment or the treasury budget. All of that will really be minor, minor stuff compared to what we see tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. Don't forget, don't forget, we'll be in our trade room tomorrow morning. We're going to execute this strategy with all of our advanced members, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Don't delay. I will see you there tomorrow morning as an advanced member. Let's jump right in. We got a lot to cover here tonight. Lots of battle zones we're talking about here tonight on the newsletter. And don't forget to make sure you watch the full length version over at sidewaysmarkets.com. Start with crude, then we'll go to S&P, some NASDAQ, and of course we'll wrap up with the gold and the euro. Crude is bullish after the sellers tried twice and failed to hold price below the triangle we covered in last night's newsletter. The only concern I have at this point is staying away from the middle of the range, which tells me to focus on traps and seller failures below the moving average as price goes back into the range, leaving a portion of that trade to run back up to retest the high. The ideal scenario for tomorrow would be to get back below this little short-term range, get down in that battle zone, and use the two-try rule to buy as low as possible before we hit the end of the week. And of course, going into the chart here, a couple things here. First of all, there's that prior week high. That's not a huge deal for crude. It's only a dollar away, right? And crude likes to make dollar moves. So it's not a it's not far-fetched right now to think we're going to go right back up and get back back up to that prior week high. But that's wishful thinking. First, we got to get through this falling resistance, right, and back up to the high of that range. So we know we have a big carrot at the end of the stick for the bulls, right, that prior week high. Second big thing here is that triangle. Had a great example today, one try, two try, and now we should be seeing this market start to open things up, going back into that range. The only problem I have is that as we get closer to the middle, we end up running into this falling resistance, you know, and what you want to think about this is, is that off the high of the range, you'll have sellers sell off the high, off the low of the range, you'll have buyers buying off the low, and in the middle, right, there's just, it's, it's kind of like a vacuum, you know, buyers are keeping it up, sellers keeping it down, and it just becomes a lot choppier, right, look left, and you can see it gets pretty choppy, right, in the middle of those ranges, so I want to stay away from that area, the bulls have control, their objective is to get back up to retest 51.32, and if they get lucky, right, they can run up to that prior week high. Where are we right now? We're just below that no trade zone. So here are two scenarios I'm watching for tomorrow. First one, we go up. I don't want to trade inside the no trade zone. I look for a kick out, right, and I'm buying from there. Second scenario, we end up going back below this little short-term spike and range, Anytime we see a spike and range, anytime we see a range, we're always thinking two try rule, one try, two try, and back up using that battle zone. So first scenario, strong move up, show me proof, then rather than chasing after it, let's use the low of that range, let's do this, use that 76, use the top of that range, use this area as support, strong move up, two-legged pullback, little trap low, right, and a buy, back up we go. Profit off at that falling resistance, runner off, back to the high, and if you've got a bolt left in the gun, 
leave that runner into the afternoon session tomorrow, right, all the way up to that 51.71. That's going to be a little bit of a patience game because you got to wait for it to go up and then pull back so you're not trading too high. What I'd love to get, though, is, is that pull back into that battle zone. Most important clue that I can see right now in this chart is that little tiny little trading range, right? Up and right, kind of wiggles around sideways. That little trading range tells me there's a bunch of buyers waiting below that 50 53 level of support now again because it's a range if it goes lower you're probably going to see sellers try to sell that for the second try i'd wait for that second try and then look for that buying opportunity going back up into that range now what happens if we run all the way back up to the range high what if we come in tomorrow morning eight o'clock eastern time and we see this massive run higher well then we have to be careful buying high and anytime in a position where the only option is to buy high What's my plan? You got it. Traps, right? So if we do find our way all the way back to the highs here, not to worry. Mark those swings. Keep focused on traps, right? This could be using the top of that triangle as support, right? But the bottom line is if we do end up finding ourselves up around the highs of this channel tomorrow or the highs of this range tomorrow morning, we know that prior week highs of magnet 5171. I just don't want to buy high. So focus on traps, get below the moving average, seller failures, right? Trap low and buy it from there. Last but not least, how do we turn bearish? I know, I know. We got to prepare for everything though, right? I mean, we, 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 we don't want to be that, that trader who says like, I only got a plan for buying here tomorrow. We got to be ready for both sides. How, first of all, in a bull market, how does, how, how does a bull market turn bearish? Is it when the bulls fail? No. Is it when the bears take control? Yes. A bull market turns bearish, not when the bulls fail, but when the bears take control. You know, think of it like a game of, uh, oh, what's the, what's the, what's, what's the word here? Uh, almost as if the buyers have the ball right now. And the only way for the sellers to take control of the ball is not for the buyers to drop it, you know, Think about football or basketball, you know, whatever, where, where whoever has control of the ball. If the buyers have control of the ball right now and they drop the ball, that doesn't automatically give the, the Bears control. The Bears still have to go pick it up and run with it, right? So the buyers could easily pull back, but the Bears have to take it and run it, right? So three things I always look for for a bull market to turn bearish or vice versa for a bear market to turn bullish. That is strength pullback and strength and this could happen tomorrow we get that big round number down there 50 bucks a barrel you know hey we've, we've seen crazier things here if that does happen find that new bear channel find your new measured move right and you keep selling you keep selling at resistance and we might be able to use that battle zone depending on if and when that happens tomorrow so strength pullback and then strength with follow through show me the buyers lose it but then show me the sellers grab it, right? That's the most important thing for a trend reversal. Speaking of trend reversal, right? How about that S&P? Boy, the S&P is bearish and trying to rotate back down to the low of the weekly trading range. The only concern I have is avoiding the middle of this range, the stinking middle again, right? Now, just like I had anticipated from last night's newsletter, yeah, I'll, I'll toot my own horn for a moment here. I won't let it go to my head, though. The buyers got their second try to break out of the range this morning. Did you watch last night's newsletter? As I talked about, we were expecting to get that second attempt. Yeah, well, they got that second attempt. Well, now buyers got that second attempt. They got their break out of the range, but that quickly got dragged back lower. Now telling me we've rejected the breakout above the highs and with range rotation, we should rotate back down to that low. My goal is to sell, but I don't want to sell here, right? We're now towards the middle of this range. So I want to sell up at the high of that range with a target down to the low. Then we'll start looking for buying opportunities using the two-try rule down in the battle zone for tomorrow. What a beautiful, beautiful range rotation example we've seen the last few weeks on the S&P. That's right. This is one of my favorite environments. I know that most people think that trading with trends is the easiest, 
But honestly, once you have a couple of years of experience, you begin to see that trend following isn't as easy as, it, as you thought it was when you were a rookie. Range-bound markets, it's a lot easier because you know where the market's going, how far it will go, and how deep you have to wait for a pullback. When it comes to a strong trend, buying high can be a little bit difficult on our emotions, right? Because you're always worried about that pullback. With ranges, range rotation is always, is always king or queen. So, as you can see, we go from the low to the high, high to the low, low to the high. I would love to teach you more about this stuff, right? I've put my life's work into our beginner, intermediate, and advanced courses, right? I'm burning through chairs in my office left and right, spend so much time on my computer every week, and I'm, and I'm only going to get better at this stuff. I can't wait to share more with you on my free trial. Don't forget to join that free trial on the homepage here at schooltrade.com. Don't forget to learn more about our beginner, intermediate, and advanced classes. And remember, I'm always here to help. Hit me up on live support on the right-hand side of the website. There's also a live support button on the homepage of our blog as well. If you're on YouTube right now, don't forget there's a link in that YouTube video description. Grab that link. Head to the website at School of Trade or over to the blog at Sideways Markets and keep, keep learning. And don't forget to keep in touch. My email address is jj at schooloftrade.com. I love to get your feedback. Leave me a comment on YouTube. Drop me an email right to my email address. And don't forget to tell your friends about School of Trade right next time you guys are excited about your trading career. Don't forget to bring them along with you for the ride. Enjoy yourselves tomorrow. I'm going to be with all of our advanced members tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock Eastern time. I will see you there. Excited for a great day. Finish up the week tomorrow. And if I don't see you tomorrow morning in the trade room, if I don't see you tomorrow morning, don't forget to come out and see me next same time, same, uh, same place next week. Next week, of course, trade room is up Monday morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. And I'll send out my next newsletter next Monday evening. Be well out there. Be nice to each other. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you guys next time. Adios, amigos.